In this video, I want to show you how you can create a profit and loss statement in Power BI. And what do I mean with a profit and loss statement, like a profit and loss statement by month, like this one, or one that actually compares like actuals versus budget or this year versus last year, these kind of things. And I want to show you how you can create that all in Power BI, all using native visuals. So no licensed visuals, just the matrix visual that is actually available. And to give you a little bit of background story, I came up with this idea for this video because I was actually asked by one of my clients, can you create a profit and loss statement? And I thought, yes, of course I can create that because we have the data. We have all the tables in the model. It's like a star scheme. So why not? And then I started tracking and dropping the information in Power BI in the matrix visual. And I quickly realized that I could not get what I wanted. It looked like this. And if you know a little bit of about profit and loss statements, you directly see there are some rows missing, there are some definitions missing. And in my case, that's because part of the data comes from the data source and part of the data that we want to see, the values, are actually measures like cross profit, where we have the revenue minus the cost of goods sold. So that's not coming from a data source, but I will create a measure in Power BI. And then when I started adding that measure in Power BI, my whole matrix visual looked horrible and nothing like I wanted it to look. And then I started my research and wondered well, how can I fix this? And then I found all these licensed visuals that you can buy. And I mean, that's fine to use them, but I want to use uh, native visuals. I want to use what's available in Power BI. So that was my challenge. So just to give you some background information, how I came up with that topic. So it's really based on a real client question. And something what I think is worth mentioning, this is a video, of course, so you can see how I do stuff, I will demo it. But I also wrote an article about this and it follows the same steps as this video. So the link is in the description. You can just click on it and then you can read along and bonus, you can download the file. So I created a demo file and all the data is in there. It's really small file. So I, if you open it, you will realize the data model is really small. The data available is not that much because it is a demo file. I did that so I could put all the data in there. So you don't need to connect to any data sources and could also just see what I'm doing and see how I format stuff and maybe recreate it. Because when I got started with Power BI, one of my toughest challenges was that I saw all these nice tutorials online and I had no clue how to recreate it because people never shared stuff or at least the stuff that I was looking for. So I try to provide all these kind of things to you so you can actually learn and see how I do stuff like that. So now enough of the background story and where you can get the stuff. Let's get started here. So let's get into Power BI. This is the report I created. It's my profit and loss statement. I have some card visuals at the top. I will not cover them today in this tutorial, but I will tell you how you can create these two profit and loss statements. This one is by month and this one is in my case yes to date versus last year. It could be actuals versus budget, you can actually put in all the information you want to put in there that works for you and that works for your profit and loss statement because the logic behind it is the same. So how do you get here? So this was the mat matrix visual I showed you before, where you can see this is not how I want it to look like. I actually wanted it to look like this here on the right side. And you see we have the cost of goods sold. It's here. I want it here. Operating expenses here revenue here, we are missing cross profit percentage and net profit. So this is not how I wanted it to be. So you see the layout is not what I like, but also the sorting is not what I like and I miss measures. And I can show you what happens if I just add the cross profit measure. You see it's added to the right as a value and not here. So this is not going to work for me. I realized that quickly. The first thing that I did was I created an additional table. Why did I create an additional table? You see the category and account here, and this could be anything. This could be classification and subclassification, these kind of things. Here we are missing cross profit, cross profit percentage, net profit, and it's not sorted in the way I want it to be sorted. So to 
get actually the information that I want in my table, I create another table with everything in it that I want. Let's go to that table. It's my profit and loss helper table. Here you see uh, I have five columns and account ID is referring to my account dimension. So in my account dimension that I get from my data source, I see revenue, cost of goods sold, operating expenses and the account. And I make sure that in my helper table, all the information that I get from my dimension is also there with the corresponding ID. And then I told you I have measures that I also want to show that are not for my data source. So I give them an ID starting in this case with nine. Then I write down how I want the category to be named and then the account description. And then I also make sure to sort this. So I, I put numbers here in the way I want the category and account to be sorted. How do you get that helper table? I got that helper table just by going to home and enter data because this is a demo file and I want to provide the file to you afterwards so you can use it. But this could of course also be a table generated from your general ledger. This could be from an external data source. This could be an Excel file, SharePoint file, all these kind of things. So in my case, I just put it in there clicking on enter data. So this is my helper table. And if we go to the data model, here we have my fact table with all the transaction lines. Here's the account and here we have a date table and they're connected like this. And now I created this helper table, this one, and initially it does not have a relationship, but I create a relationship between account ID and account ID and it's a many to one relationship. And I make sure that the filter direction is single and account filters the helper table. That's important. If you use other filter directions or other cardinality, so really make sure when you create that, that this is correctly configured. So now we have this helper table, but how do we create well, what we saw here. We will get started with this table where we actually have category account and then month and then the values here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a matrix visual and then I do not use what I have in my original account dimension, but I use what I have in my helper table and I put in the rows my account and on top of that the category. Then I go to my date table and I add the month name short for the columns. And now it says I can't determine the relationship. And that's true because there's no active uh, relationship between the date and the helper table at the moment. Instead of putting a relationship there, what we are going to do is we are going to create a measure to actually get these numbers in here. And how are we going to do that? Because let's put that away for a second. We see the months and we have category and account from our helper table, but we can't just add values in there. Power BI needs to know what these values are. Please don't type this over. It will be in the description, the link to my article where you can just copy this measure. I created a measure, it's the profit and loss switch, and I have three variables at the beginning where I say, where I actually tell Power BI well, look at the value that is selected for each row that I'm looking at and check if there's a value in there, if it's not blank, and then it goes there row by row. And then we have this switch statement where it actually says, is the account ID a one or two? And here you also see the ones starting with a nine. Then give me back this measure. Of course, I created these measures before, but I don't think it makes sense if you look at me creating all these measures one by one. And I refer to every measure for every ID that we have, every account ID. And then at the bottom, you see a sum X and maybe you wonder why do we need that? If you would only use this part of the measure, you would not get the correct total values in your measure. So creating that PNL switch measure, I again create a matrix, I put in the PNL switch as a value. I go to my helper table and I put the category and account as rows. And I go to my date and month name short goes to the columns. And now it looks like this and we can ex go to the lowest level here. It does not look exactly the same. I mean, if we look at this, you can see it's not exactly the same look. I will show you how to format this, but this way you created the base for what we want to create. 
So let's go to another page here. I want to show you how you can format this so that it looks like this. And of course the format you're using, that's very specific. I know com some companies, they have a specific style that they're requesting or a, s a specific formatting. I use this one uh, and I will show you some of the steps you can take. So first I click on my visual after I created it and let's start almost at the top. We could give it the title, I will skip that for now. I go to layout and style presets and I say none. So it looks very, very clean. And then layout tabula. And if I click on tabula, you see that we get this layout and that's kind of what I wanted to see. Something else that I think is important is plank rows. If we click on plank rows after each total, we will get a plank row. You see? This makes it easier to read. And we can also say, I want a border there at the top and you can give it like a certain color. So we get these lines here. Now, the column headers, if we go to the column headers, I want them to be aligned in the middle, but I want the title alignment, this one to the left. Again, personal preferences here and maybe make this black, semi bold. So just some tweaking here. Then I go to row headers and you see this plus and minus signs. So first thing that I'm doing is I click on the minus everywhere where I don't want to see two times the same information. And then I go to plus and minus icons and turn it off. Now, if you think, oh, I actually need that second line there again, you can do right click, expand, selection, it will be there again. You can also do right click, collapse, selection. So you don't necessarily need these plus and minus signs. I always thought it only works like that. And then I found out that you can do right click there. So I thought I wanted to share that. And then I also have specific column formatting. I click on specific column and I say apply to subtotals, only subtotals. And I want the background color. It should be really light blue to something. So it should look like this. I also turn off the column subtotals ones at the right. And you see it looks almost the same as this one. Here I chose a different font size, font type, and I just tried around all kinds of stuff because that's kind of how I design. I just try all the options and see what works best in that case for my client. But I think no one needs to watch me like an hour formatting a table. So I thought I will give you these quick tips. And then everything else you will find in the format pane. You can do this. And now that we created that monthly statement that we have here, you maybe wonder how do I get from here to this, where I have year to date versus last year or actions versus budget or these kind of things. I need some more workarounds. So <laughs> I, I will show you. If we go here at my matrix, we see at the top the columns they are from PL view. You haven't seen that yet. It's another table that I added because in my columns, I want this year, last year and Delta. I want that to show and then I want all the values to be filled. So I go to my table view and I show you. This is actually a calculated table that I created with this measure. You see, I also have a sort order in there, one, two, three, because I want to sort my columns. I can advise to have these sort orders everywhere where you really want to be in control how it is sorted, because otherwise probably I sort stuff alphabetically if it's text. And that does not always make sense. So I create this additional table and then I add this column PL view at the top. The rows again are category and account. And now if we look into the values, this is also a switch. It's this switch. And if we look at this switch, it refers to other switches, the switch for this year and last year. So the switch for this year, it is the same as for the monthly view that we used. And the one for last year, is actually using last year measures. So I made all kinds of measures to get the same period last year. You could also do these measures here that you say calculate revenue product sales last year, same period last year date, and then you would get the same result. I refer also because it's easier to read to measures that I created before. And then we have the switch that I'm using here where I actually say, there's a variable that says, okay, look at which value is selected in this view that we created with this year, last year and Delta. Then look at which profit and loss ID is selected. And then we have one with actuals. So that's this year. Then we have one with last year. 
is last year. And then we have here a variable that says if the view type is this year, so the actions is this one. If it's last year, so last year to date. And if it's delta, then I want actuals minus last year. And now you see here in the return statement, we give this information back, but you see here two rows where I actually refer to one of my IDs, 992, because that one is a percentage. And I have my whole table formatted as currency because it's all currency, all the other things. And I want that one to show as a percentage. So I put that also in here. You can see that here it's the cross profit percentage and you see everything else in my tables is formatted like this and the formatting I actually do by going to the format pane properties data format profit and loss and there you see currency and in my case euro and thousand separator and then we are adding that switch again to our table and formatting is kind of the same as what we did before and then I just put it all in a report and now I say I just did that I have spent probably a full week on figuring out how to do this reading articles about it trying how to do this myself, struggling a lot with the relationships, with the tables, and with the formatting. So even if it sometimes appears in these tutorials that it's super simple, getting to that point where it is super simple for yourself takes some time, to be honest. And now I think, yes, this makes sense and I know what I'm doing. And if you're watching this video for the first time and you've never done this before and you think, I'm not sure if I can do this. You can do this. It is definitely possible. Just download the file, read the article step by step. And if you have any questions, just let me know. You can always write a comment under this video. You can approach me via LinkedIn. It's all fine. If you have questions, just approach me because I know how much I struggled with this. So I hope this helps. I hope this helps you to create actually a profit and loss statement in Power BI that you want to create just using matrix results.